Hello and welcome to Inside the Guns. This is a special series that lets you experience our, the Gun Gallery collection through a chat with Kenyon's professors. Our special guest today is Royal Rose, Professor Emeritus of Religious Studies. And we're going to be talking about a few illustrations from a collection that we have um, by Salvador Dali. You see one of them here. Professor Rose is going to talk about three of them today. And this body of work is something that Salvador Dali, a surrealist artist, was commissioned by the Italian government to do in 1957. Uh, it's a set of illustrations for the Divine Comedy that was commissioned by the Italian government to commemorate the 700th anniversary of Dante's birth. And it was supposed to be completed in 1965, but Salvador Dali was fired from the commission, if I'm correct, because uh, the, the Italian government succumbed to some pressure by the people to, um, to, to not hire a, an artist who wasn't Italian. They felt that this commission should not go to a Spanish artist. But Dali was really invested in the project. He had created a hundred watercolor illustrations. So he didn't want to let it go. He took it to a French printmaker and worked with this master printer to develop a very, very unique type of printmaking called wood engraving. And this is a very painstaking process, but it imparts a, a very sort of translucent, um, fluid appearance that looks a lot like watercolor. So he was able to reproduce that effect in prints. And he created several editions, and we're fortunate to have one here at Kenyon College. Um, Professor Rhodes has used these illustrations in teaching a purgatory, <laughs> a section of the Divine Comedy in, in the Wings of Death class. And this is a, a very special collection of prints for him. And I, I think of these as your prints, actually. <laughs> <laughs> so um, with that, I'm just going to turn it over to you and, and ask you just to enlighten us about these examples from the series. Well, thank you so much. <laughs> and thank you for opportunity to talk not only about Dali, but also Dante. Uh, I always tell students that when they graduate, if they're walking across virtually or whatever, uh, the, uh, the stage for graduation, and they haven't read the Divine Comedy, it's not valid until they do. Um, <laughs> but um, in the course on uh, the meanings of death that I taught for uh, almost 40 years, um, I used uh, Dante's Purgatorio uh, in the section dealing with the afterlife and how different uh, traditions uh, thought about the meaning of life in terms of what comes after life, if there is anything uh, after life. Um, Dante um, is uh, one of those people who took in his own tradition, um, the medieval Western Christian tradition, um, which had a lot of theological insight into um, hell, the inferno, and a lot of metaphysical uh, speculation about uh, paradise. But the purgatory, the place of purgation, preparing people to go to heaven, was largely created whole cloth out of his creative imagination. And that's what uh, struck me is, is important for the students to understand how people took their religious traditions, but also transformed them by their own creative genius. Um, the purgatory, I, I think, is important. Um, most people don't realize that uh, for, for many Christians, it's either hell or heaven. And uh, Dante, like others, said, most people aren't ready to go to heaven, even if they've led a good life. So they need to you know, work out some of the problems. Um, I, 
I think we'd probably ask psychoanalysts to do this for us now. Um, but um, the idea of purgatory means that heaven is large rather than the narrow, small place that um, other uh, Christian religious um, believers have asserted. Uh, so in the, um, in, in the Inferno, um, he uh, takes us on a journey down to the very pit of, of hell, uh, beginning with the sins of the flesh, Paolo and Francesca. Um, uh, figures, historic figures, engaged in forbidden love. And we've all heard the idea, well, love takes away our, our reason, our, uh, gives us a compulsion to do things. Dante, although as a poet, he sometimes bought into that, in the Inferno said, no, what they were experiencing was lust rather than love. But because he's a good Neoplatonist, sins of the flesh aren't that much trouble. It's sins of the spirit, in the case of the Inferno, betrayal, treason, Judas betraying Jesus, Cassius and Brutus betraying Caesar. Those are the figures that Satan is chewing on at the very bottom of an icy hell. Dante is also the one who gives us the view that hell is cold rather than hot. Coldness describes the lack of love. And the comedy, as he called it, later folks call it the divine comedy, is all about love. So this is one of the images uh, from, uh, from the Inferno, and you can see Dante with his uh, with his guide, the poet Virgil, um, who Dante wanted to model himself after, um, walking by a figure that represents those who are possessed by the demons of reason. And so you can see the head is split open and the tongue is just, is just dragging people who think they know it all, who look for the meaning of life in the knowledge that they've accumulated, how reasonable they were. Forget feelings, forget empathy, forget love. Um, and so in the Inferno, they've chosen, rather than the path of love leading to God, they've chosen the path of ego leading to themselves. Um, I like to think that they were the first possessors of the iPhone um, instead of the Wii phone. Um, but uh, this is uh, a dramatic um, picture of what, uh, what Dante thought of uh, reason. Of course, he was, uh, Dali was uh, one of those people who was uh, uh, critiquing the, uh, the Enlightenment um, understanding of, of, of reason. Uh, unattached to the full range of human emotions and passions and, and, uh, and, and feelings. Giotto um, had painted magnificent murals of the sufferings of those in, in, in hell. Um, Dali gives us a little more specific content uh, to those sufferings. So Dante and Virgil uh, go down to the very pit of hell, and then um, on Easter morning, people say Easter Sunday morning, Easter is always a Sunday, um, and, um, and then are, uh, are met by various uh, figures, one of whom is the uh, Roman figure Cato of Utica. Uh, who is preparing the, uh, the dead who have made it to the shores of purgatory. They're in, um, and through the prayers of those left behind, um, their passage up the seven-story mountain as what has been called prisoners of hope, um, they will eventually pass into 
uh, in, into paradise. So for a medieval Christian, your hope was to get into purgatory so that your sins would be purged and you would be prepared uh, for heaven. Only the Virgin Mary and the apostles were good enough to go straight to uh, heaven. Um, but most people, again, needed uh, help uh, to get there. And through the seven-story mountain, the seven deadly sins are purged from, uh, uh, from those making the ascent. At the very end of purgatory, uh, Dante has been purged himself, even though he's still living. Um, and so this um, figure is called the purification of, of Dante. So we're looking through an angel to, to Dante. We see through the prism of holiness what the human is destined, truly destined for. And slowly, very slowly, Dante has made that ascent and prepared himself as much as possible um, with the help of his guide Virgil, but also for the help that was initially given to him by his dead love, Beatrice, who sent Virgil and sent other uh, figures to help him along the way, to lure him to, uh, to heaven. Um, love, divine love, woos the soul in hidden ways, bringing um, one to perfection. Okay. I'll, I'll just note that I'm, you notice I'm handling these with, with my bare hands, and when Prince said we, if you have clean hands, it's safe to handle the objects, which are in protective masks as well. Virgil has to leave um, Dante um, before he gets into the next stage, paradise, because Virgil is a pagan, um, but a virtuous pagan. Um, and so that shook up the tradition as well that Dante was working with, Cato, a pagan suicide, who is in purgatory. Um, Virgil, who has to go back, um, but is able to show Dante how to mount the, uh, the mountain of uh, uh, the purgatory. Those are challenges to the religious beliefs of, uh, of his time. But Dante being such a forceful, creative person, and I think Dali picking up on that creativity, has given us images that shake up the, um, the old assumptions that people have. Um, both about medieval religion, but also about religious art. Um, Dali, strangely enough, um, despite his distance from Catholicism, was encouraged in this project by none other than Pius XII, the, uh, the Pope at the time, um, which was startling to many. It was startling to me when I first uh, um, read that. But uh, Dante is left by Virgil before he gets to, uh, to, uh, to heaven. Um, and it is then that Beatrice returns. Remember, Beatrice was the great love of his life. Dante was married to someone else and had children. They had a great family and everything. But the love of his life was Beatrice. Um, and so she begins to escort him uh, to the very Imperium, the place of pure light. And for medieval Christians, um, the goal was to have the vision of God, God as pure light. So Beatrice goes as far as she can and then resumes her seat in the great white rose that is Dante's image of the blessed um, in heaven. And she looks one last time at Dante and then turns away 
to look into pure light. At that point, he's helped by another figure. I think he's making the stress that we're all in need of help for every step that we take in life, spiritual life, or in physical life, um, intellectual life. And that figure is Saint Bernard of Clairvaux, the great medieval um, abbot. Footnote, the name is Bernard. Bernard is a dog. Bernard is the saint. Um, and at the very end, the culmination um, of the Divine Comedy, uh, this meditation on love, introduces Dante through the prayer of Saint Bernard to the Virgin Mary. And it's Bernard who tells him that he must look upon the Virgin Mary and her radiance to be prepared to look upon the splendor of Christ in the pure light. And just as that uh, image from the purification of Dante at the end of the Purgatorio, the idea is that the Virgin Mary, the saints, the holy men and women of God are like windows into the divine and uh, they are transparent. So looking at them, you are carried into meditation, reflection, um, imagining um, the divine. And here, the Virgin Mary um, with uh, Bernard and, uh, and, and Dante um, has appeared and you can see that uh, her face is not very articulated because Dante is looking through her to the child that she wore and gave a human life to so that humans might become divine. And so she is that transparent holiness that leads him finally to light. I think that's, that's beautiful. And, and as you're describing that, uh, it's really um, kind of bringing to light the transition that Dami makes in his style, in, in the way that he represents bodies. And we can see here in this comparison with the example from Inferno, um, you know, how almost ineffable the bodies become, mm -hmm. how, how he steps away from articulating them, so it's just a modulation of color and light and um, uh, it, a modulation of hues, and not even so much shadows. So the figures are, are literally just illumination. Mm -hmm. And this figure here, like so many of the others in the Inferno illustrations, are very, um, uh, they, they really evoke a visceral response <laughs> in the viewer. They're, these figures are, uh, their bodies um, are grotesque, they're mutilated, they're, the figures are trapped within um, their physical existence. And for me, this is very much characteristic of Dali's surrealism. Um, he, he had a, a figurative style that was um, both realistic and like anatomically um, very uh, uh, focused and um, they, it, but, but at the same time he, he really um, played with, like the, uh, with fantasy and also the putrefication of the body. You know, his figures exist in a dream world, but often a horrifying dream world. Mm -hmm. So even in his own um, uh, growth as an artist, I think we see a, a huge, um, almost like an epiphany when he reaches the stage of Paradiso. Um, everything just opens up, mm -hmm. and, and it's still, it, it's, it's beautiful. It, it works so well. Um, but I'm wondering what you think about um, and, and knowing that you know many artists have illustrated the Divine Comedy. Um, what do you think about Dali's approach to 
to illustrate, to represent in these stories, and um, his use of, of a surrealist language, mm -hmm. um, what, it, what it lends to the interpretation or the reading of, of the Divine Comedy. Well, I, I, those are wonderful um, comments about uh, Dali's uh, um, artistry. Um, I think, uh, for me, the, uh, the surrealistic language is his reading of Dante within uh, a culture that has been shaped by Freud mm -hmm. and understanding of the unconscious, um, and that uh, uh, those distortions um, are, are a way that, um, that, that Dali is also using to talk about our sense of beauty and order and, and perfection. Um, Gustave Thoré's famous illustrations for the Divine Comedy, um, the one of Satan in the, in the pit of, uh, of hell, is totally grotesque and ugly. And the, and the reason for Doré and perhaps for Dali as well is because Lucifer, the great angel of light, pure beauty, through evil is reduced to total ugliness. Um, and, and so, for me, um, finding a, a new artistic vocabulary or a different artistic vocabulary from William Blake's uh, uh, Divine Comedy or Botticelli's Divine uh, um, Comedy is immersing himself into, into the story. And that's, and that's why he didn't illustrate every canto or every... Um, Encounter in, in every canto, he he very selectively chose um, chose different things, and I think that that can be read as as a window into Dali uh, mm -hmm. as much as a window into the Divine Comedy. If people are interested in Dante, there is a scholar um, just retired from Yale. His name is Peter Hawkins, and his writing about Dante is just magnificent. Um, so I'd recommend that. Um, but you probably know uh, folks who have written more about uh, Dali and, uh, and uh, Surrealistic. I you could recommend. Um, so. Well, I, I, I really appreciate your comments about um, how you think Dali interpreted the story and the relevance to the times mm -hmm. and um, the, what Surrealism conveys about, about the Divine Comedy. Um, I really appreciate your insight. Um, and thank you so much for, for using these and, and revisiting them and talking with our audiences again and again, because you have so much to, to offer. So we really appreciate your expertise. Well, I, I appreciate the opportunity. When you told me that these were in the, the collection and I was able to use them with my classes, Former students still talk about these these images and uh, refer to them. So um, that was a gift for the future. Well, thank you, <laughs> and thank you for joining us for this episode of Inside the Gun. And thanks again to Caroline Colford for producing the series, and to Robin Goodman, collections manager, for making the work available to us. We'll see you next time. <laughs>